This is an intro. Who needs an intro? I don't need an intro. This is just a vape show. It's just a vape show. Vape show. Vape show. This is an intro. Who needs an intro? I don't need an intro. This is just a vape show. It's just a vape show. Vape show. Vape show. YouTube, what is up? I'm your homeboy, homeboy Josh. Back at you, fresh from Seattle, Washington, Pacific Northwest, the PNW. Yeah, it was awesome. We had a great fucking time. I'm gonna tell you all about it. And I'm gonna tell you all about what I was vaping while I was there. And we're probably gonna do a quick juice review as well and look at some cotton. And yeah, we've got a lot of stuff going on today and I'm gonna bring you up to speed right now. So for starters, this is a review about Bombshell, which is a line of five juices, and they're all basically uh, crafted after the namesakes of various uh, beautiful stars from, you know, the 19... It's 1940s? 1920s? 1940s? I don't, I don't fucking know. Someone's gonna tell me I'm wrong, no matter what it is. We're gonna kick it off with Lucille, which is an iconic blend of spunky pineapple and creamy coconut, as in, you know, Lucille Ball. Personally, I would have chosen the picture of her and her funky, you know, headdress doing the, you know, whatever, but I guess that the name is kind of implied and the picture is kind of cooler that way. Anyway, whatever. Anyway, so the whole time I'm in Seattle, I'm vaping on just a few devices. I kept it very, very simple. I kept it very, very easy for myself. I had myself a dripper. I went with the, uh, the new one from Watofo. It's the, uh, the Vaporous RDA. I've got a pair of Fuse Clapton coils in here and I've got it set up on the Drag Box Mod from Vupu, which is pretty much the only mod that I used while I was there, you know? It's simple, it's easy to use, it's reliable, the battery life on it is awesome. Consistent hit from the beginning of the battery cycle to the end of the battery cycle, which is awesome. Yeah, I really like this mod. Um, if you can get it for a good, cheap price, I reviewed it already, I recommend it, I dig it. And when I wasn't vaping on the Vaporous RDA, I was vaping on Watofo's Suck My Mod Edition Serpent. The SMM Serpent, the one that Matt put together. When I wasn't using my RDA and I wanted just a tank to carry around and not have to worry about dripping, which was rare, I was using this. But to be honest with you, it was rare when I wasn't dripping because I was using this bad boy. This is the Flavorous Stainless Steel E-Juice Bottle. CACU, C-A-C-U-Q, E-Cig. I have no idea how to say it. They sent this on over to me a while ago. Said, try it out, check it out, see what you think. I gotta tell you, I fucking love this thing. I use it all the time. I'll tell you more about it in a little bit. But yeah, I'm just a quick intro to what I've been, what I've been playing around with the past past few days in the PNW. And the uh, only cotton that I was using while I was there with the, was this Angora Rabbit cotton, which is really good cotton. I've actually, it's good flavor, it's good consistent flavor, it holds up really well. I, you know, everyone's always asked me about what kind of cotton I use and what I recommend. Um, you know, I'm not too particular with cotton, but if you happen to cross this stuff, it's pretty darn good, pretty darn good, gotta say like this stuff. I'm actually using it right now to re-wick da, 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 the Vaporous. Yeah, it comes in like this, <laughs> this sausage roll, you know, that kind of thing. And it just goes round and round and round like that. And the pouch reseals nice and easy, just like that. It's a particularly light cotton, I've noticed. Um, one thing about it is I find I use a bit more of it than I do normal cotton, just because it, it's thin. It's very, it's very thin cotton. It's wispy. It's wispy. When it's wet, it's not a big deal, but otherwise you get some little flakes that, you know, it, it breaks apart really easy. But once it's wet, it, it soaks up juice really, really well. I wouldn't say it soaks up more or less juice than any other cotton or anything like that. I, I'd say that it maintains very well. I didn't actually change my cotton once while I was there, and it's been, you know, we left pretty much on basically Friday night was when I set everything up for me to go. And it's Friday now, it's been a week. So it's been a week of me just in, on vacation, vaping heavily and using this cotton. Pretty good, gotta say. We packed up on Friday and left early, early on Saturday. Like we woke up at four in the morning, hopped in the car, down to the airport, hopped on the plane. Um, we made a transfer in Houston. We touched down at about, you know, something, something around noon, something, something like that. 
noon or so. First thing we did, of course, was hike 20 minutes, yeah, 20 minute hike over to our gorgeous fucking hotel. Um, we ended up staying at actually three different hotels. It was so cheap for the flight compared to what it normally is because I priced that trip before. It was cheaper than normal for the flight, but the hotels, holy crap, hotels in Seattle are so fucking expensive. So we ended up getting some deals, but we had to be willing to, you know, hotel hop basically. So the first night we we're in this gorgeous freaking hotel, like the Beatles stayed there, Led Zeppelin stayed there. It was like a water view room, just fucking gorgeous, gorgeous. Uh, the views were just amazing because this, this thing, this fucking hotel is built on freaking stilts, right? It juts out into the water on stilts. <laughs> it's like a floating freaking, it's not floating, you know, it's stable, but I mean, it's out on the water. And uh, you know, we had a water view room, it was just fucking Awesome, gorgeous. The first night was pretty much us getting settled in and we did get to check out uh, the Olympic Sculpture Park. Yeah, Olympic Sculpture Park is just gorgeous and everything around it is gorgeous. Like you've got just these weird sculptures everywhere and they're far enough apart. They're far enough apart where you can walk through them without being distracted by one or the other. You can observe just one at a time, which is really, really cool. And a couple of them just really stand out as just being just awesome like uh, the one that really will always resonate with me is this woman's face and it's just standing there like this giant totem and it's almost like an optical illusion the way the light hits it it looks like it isn't really there like it's just kind of appeared out of thin air and it'll be gone in an instant is what it feels like it's just so strange to look at it it's just like it doesn't belong there, but it, it's there and then it just looks like it's going to evaporate or something. It's so cool. And then, you know, all around the sculpture park, you've got, you know, the, the, the train is going by and the water is behind you. And there are these like, this is these little beach areas a little bit further down and just gorgeous. And people are just, you know, dipping their feet in the water and there's dogs running around. You know, that, that was our introduction to Seattle pretty much. Awesome, awesome. Oh, by the way, shout out to Todd and his girlfriend who ran into me on the street, said hello, and told me about how they're going to take up uh, braiding um, because of my videos. So that's awesome. And uh, I'm glad that I could uh, inspire you guys. And thanks for saying hello because you're the first friendly faces that I got to see in Seattle. That was really cool. Thanks guys. Shout out to you. Lucille. It's definitely a pineapple, but it's it's kind of like a laid back pineapple. Have you tried that that tea, the tea infused pineapple blackberry from Starbucks? That's what it's like. Minus the blackberry, of course. That's what it's kind of like. It's tasty though. Like it's refreshing and it's subtle. Um, the pineapple is like very fresh, but also not like super overly drippy ripe. It's not like pineapple in syrup, you know, it's more like a fresh pineapple, but kind of eating just a little bit of it at a time. Like maybe even just put some pineapple in some water and let like that juice kind of overtake the water a bit. That's what it's like. It's very fragrant too, if that makes sense. Like I taste it, I smell it while I'm vaping it, you know? While I'm tasting it, I'm also smelling it, so it's very fragrant. Good for the nose exhales. Absolutely good for the nose exhales. I like that one. I like it. It grows on you. Um, it starts out really subtle, but then it gets deeper and deeper. Very refreshing, very light, but fulfilling. Yeah, I dig that juice. It's nice. Really nice. So let's talk about this vaporous RDA, okay? This vaporous RDA 
It's got those clamping connections, which is always kind of cool. It also has, you know, two regular holes on either side of the wall. So there's a wall with clamps, and then you've got two post holes in it, and those screws that secure the post holes also drive the clamps down. Works great for building, for the most part. I kind of wish that there were some, um, kind of like how it was with the original goon, the connections between the clamps and the wall. It's kind of an angle, which made it really easy to sort of push your coil in there without having to lift the, uh, the clamps up. That was nice. I don't know why that kind of went by the wayside, but secondary to using springs, which I still think most clamping connections should use. Springs are awesome, people. Springs are badass. So manufacturers recommend springs in these clamping connections. I love clamps, but springs are awesome. If you don't use that, have that cutaway there, like the original Goon had, to make it easy for those coils to just lift your leads up for you. It just makes life easy, you know? It also reminds me in that way, and then it combines the clamping connection with the post holes, a lot of that RDA that I brought back with me from Atlanta, the Purge RDA from way back when that we took a look at a while ago. I like that concept, how you have the option of using just the clamps or just the post holes or combining the two to make it so you don't have to bend your leads. It works really well. I like that, I do. The one thing that I really question about this RDA, the one thing that really just irks me about it, how the air airflow options are set up big airflow holes and little airflow holes and they're both set up for dual coils but the airflow hole options are just weird there's a thick one and a skinny one that's it and stop me if i'm wrong here stop me if i'm wrong but the skinny one and the big one they kind of overlap each other is what i'm saying you know you can close off this big airflow hole enough that you know you've only got a sliver of air the smaller airflow option what purpose does that have if i can just get the same airflow by restricting the big airflow option down that's the one thing that drives me a little bit crazy about it why didn't they just have a single airflow option in there that would just be way better if you ask me or something else like maybe two little airflow holes side by side if you're going to do something a little bit different there's just replication between the two different airflow hole sec sections settings you know the big one and the little one there's just replication there it's there for no reason oh and the other thing is that the top cap is almost impossible almost impossible to turn uh, when I first got it. I had to take off one of the O-rings because there's two O-rings on it and it's completely unnecessary. It just needs one, guys. Other than that, it's a fun bait. It's flavorful, it's tasty, there's plenty of build room, you know? It's straight. Just those small changes, you know, could bring it from a pretty okay RDA to something you know, really good, if you ask me. Day two in Seattle was all about Pike's Place Market, uh, running around, getting the sights and the taste and the feelers for the city, you know, just seeing what it was all about. Um, it, that market is just overwhelming. I did get some footage of a good fish toss for you guys. You're welcome. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> full of just interesting sights and smells and feels. I got all the feels in that market, man. It was just so cool uh, walking around and seeing just these random people. I mean, the Pike's Place market, just all walks of life. Dads with their kids and dads looking like hipster dads and, you know, farmers and hipster kids and bearded dudes, and this one dude that looked like he was in the mob. I don't know, he looked like the fucking godfather of Pike Place Market or something. He was like, whoa, who is this guy? I would not want to be in a blind alley with this dude. Uh, tourists and business people and just, man, it was, it was just this, it was awesome. Just awesome. Marilyn. Creamy, something fruity maybe on the nose. I don't know. Let's see. You know, it's worth mentioning how similar some of the packaging and the idea of the packaging is to pinup juice, even some of the names, you know. But the juices are completely different than pinup, completely different.
It's like on the tip of my tongue. I don't know what the fuck it is. It's driving me crazy. What is it? I don't want Strawberry marshmallow fluff is what this is. See what throws me is that it's fresh. It's very fresh strawberry. That's what throws me. It's not like a candy or like a milk dud kind of strawberry or like a milkshake kind of strawberry or anything like that. It's fresh strawberries. Yeah. And the marshmallow fluff, I'm not getting so much. Very little of this tastes artificial to me. It tastes very, very natural actually. For the, someone looking for a very natural tasting strawberry, Marilyn from Bombshell, pretty damn good. It's tart and sweet. Um, like tiny baby pink strawberries, that's what I get from it, I don't know. Yeah, like fresh, like they're still attached to the freaking vine. I mean, that's what I get from that. I mean, I don't get the marshmallow fluff, but for terms of fresh strawberry, yeah. That's damn good, damn good. Damn good for a fresh strawberry. I'm not a strawberry fan, I'm really not. That's good. There's this gum wall behind the freaking market. It's the grossest, coolest thing that I've ever seen. And people just contribute to this gum wall just putting you know, their wadded up sticky gum onto this wall and it just goes on and on and on under in this ginormous tunnel of nasty. <laughs> and it's so gross and so cool. And I got so many pictures of it and uh, you know, I just loved it. I thought it was one of the coolest things I'd ever seen. I didn't contribute to it, but you know, I'm not really a gum chewer. So <laughs> it was cool to see it though. You know? That night, day two, we get back from Pike's place and you know, futzing around and doing whatever. And we're exhausted, we're still jet lagged because you know, it's three hours difference. And we decided it's a good time, late night, to head to Chihuly, which was so awesome. Oh my God. Chihuly is this artist who does like these installations of glasswork all over the world. Um, like he did like an installation in Venice called Chihuly over Venice. And he, does, he did one in Atlanta, the Botanical Garden, and he did one here, right underneath the Space Needle in Seattle. So the moment we heard about that, we were like, we're going, we can't wait. Me and the Waffles were big on art. Um, we went to, well, I'll get to the rest of it, but we went to a couple art exhibitions while we were in Seattle. But Chihuly was one that we were really looking forward to, and I have to say, it did not disappoint. It was just the most beautiful, glass work that I mean I've ever seen. It was just amazing. Um, and what's also so fascinating about this guy is that he's lost the use of his hands. So he doesn't even make it. He just basically directs other people in his workshop to make the stuff and then how to set it up and all that. Basically he's the art, art he's both the artist and the artistic director in a lot of ways, I guess you could say. But I mean it's kinda like, you know, Matisse when he you know, became a cripple later in life and he couldn't, you know, do his art the way, you know, with his paintings, he would, you know, he had those cut-ups, he made cut-up pieces of art. I was an art history major, okay? <laughs> anyway, so I get giddy about art and shit. So many great pieces, just these abstract kind of swirls and these beautiful balls reflecting the space needle set in the ground and this amazing room, this one amazing room where you just walked in. This big greenhouse is what you walk into and outside the greenhouse you're looking up at the space needle and inside is this enormous uh, sculpture of these orange you know, flowers that just dance around the entire room, which is amazing. Just amazing. And in this room, I don't know how to, how to describe it any more than just to say that I felt just peace, peace and zen. It was like a library in this room. Everyone whispering and not even knowing why they're doing it. You ever been in a place like that where people are just whispering for no reason? Like they're in a library. And we did go to a library too, I'll get to that. But that's what this room did to people. 
it, it was a powerful, powerful place. But my favorite thing in that entire exhibit was this boat. This enormous monstrosity of a structure, this, these two boats, I think it's two boats actually in the water. One is like a gondola, one is like a canoe, and they're just stuffed with toys, um, is what it looks like. It looks like they're stuffed with toys, but it's glasswork, of course. Ah. I want to go back, man. That's the one thing, like I, if I had to do it all again, if I could only do one thing in Seattle, I'd go see Chihuly again. That was so cool. And of course, it's two for the price of one because the Space Needle is right there. I'm not the kind of person that's going to climb up the Space Needle, but seeing it from, you know, close up like that, that's kind of cool. Kind of cool. Audrey, as in Audrey Hepburn, I guess. Marilyn of course, Marilyn Monroe, Lucille being Lucille Ball. On the nose, something spicy? Maybe vanilla? Oh, shit, that's interesting. Oh, I know what that fucking is. I know what it is. I know what it is. That's the lemon bar. That's the lemon bar. Is that Audrey? Yep. Bold lemon bar, kissed with powdered sugar. That's what I get. I get the powdered sugar. Like, it's really in your face with the powdered sugar. Um, light on the bakery, but deep on the powdered sugar and the berry. Uh, not berry, I mean lemon. Don't ask. Mm. These are all very cloudy too. They come in 60 milliliter bottles. It doesn't say what they are in terms of PGBG, but they're pretty cloudy. Yeah, they're really cloudy. And really flavorful. They start out subtle, but the more you bake them, the more that flavor just kind of sinks in. You just kind of sat with it. It's good. Mm. Like I said, me and the waffles were big on art. We actually both studied art history in college, which is really cool because we didn't know that about each other. If you know anything about me and Waffles, we you know, knew each other when we were younger, like in our teens, and then we lost touch for many years, and then you know, we, we reconnected, and it turned out that we both studied you know, art history in college, which is you know, one, one many of the reasons that we reconnected. You know, we, we peruse the books in the hotel rooms, of course, you know, because that's what you do. You look through the menu, room service menu, you look through, you know, whatever kind of reading materials in there and see if there's anything interesting. Well, something was very interesting. We see this, this ad for this announcement of this exhibition that's at Seattle Art Museum, Sam, for a limited time. We instantly knew we had to go see it. It's only a few blocks from there. So we walk down there and we get in line and there have been people there since seven in the morning waiting to get tickets and the place doesn't open until 10. And after we get there, we're not worried about getting tickets anymore. We're worried for the people behind us because it just stretches and stretches and stretches on and on and on. We're like 20 people back in the line. This line goes back at least a couple hundred people by the time they open the doors and let people in to buy their tickets. Wow. And it's only going to be there until like uh, September or something, something like that. It's this artist, uh, Kusama. And what they had, what we were so excited about are these infinity rooms, as what they're called. They let you into this, inf this room for no more than 20 or 30 seconds. There's like five or six rooms that you can go into. And there are these sort of inflatables. <laughs> That's the best way to describe them. Balloons and inflatable tentacles and all kinds of weird shit that is surrounded by mirrors. And it's like you're just going on and on and on in, into infinity. And of course, this is all contemporary art. And for her, these dots and whatever represent love and this room that you walk in with these stickers and you can place your stickers on there, kind of like the gum wall. Just adding to it with your own stickers is kind of like childhood and it's all just awesomeness and there's one that we didn't even you're allowed to photograph and whatever so I grabbed a few pictures and whatnot but the last room was like these Chinese lanterns and it just goes stretches on and on in this blackness and this these Chinese lanterns and it was another one of those moments 
where mean waffles are in there and it's your you're suddenly whispering without realizing it. You know what I mean? Just awesome. The rest of Sam was cool too. You know, they had, you know, some Matisse and they had some of this and some of that. Nothing that really, you know, blew my mind necessarily in terms of art that I needed to see, but they had some really cool pieces. Uh, so next up we've got Sophia, which uh, I cheated. It's a sassy raspberry lemonade uh, Italian ice. You know what? I think this one we're going to go ahead and we're going to put it in the uh, in the serpent, the uh, suck my mod edition serpent. Because why not? Well, the reason is because waffles is going to like this flavor, and I'm going to give the rest to her, and I'm going to try it out in this. That's the plan anyway. She kind of already claimed it. <laughs> Came downstairs, was nosy, checked out the flavor, and she's like, mm, "This one sounds like me." I'm like, okay, cheers. So the other thing Waffles loves is reading. Um, I, I, I try to read, but I can't keep up with her. I mean, she just blazes through books and she loves to go to the library. Like a little dorky little nerd that she is, she loves to go to the freaking library. So when she found out that there's one in particular beautiful library in Seattle, she really wanted to go there. We made it a point just for her to go to this library. Of course, I'm thinking of all the freaking places that we can see while we're here in Seattle, we're gonna go to the library. She's not gonna read a book while she's there. She just wants to see the library. Yes, my wife is an uber nerd and I love her to death for it. And even more so because it was probably one of the coolest things, one of the coolest things that we saw while we were there. Yes, I shit you not, the library is fucking phenomenal. Even just walking up on the library. I, I kind of went into it a little bit blind. I'm like, okay, we're going to the library, whatever. But we come up on this amazing looking building. Just from the outside, it looks incredible. And I get photo happy right then and there. I take one look at this building and before I even step foot inside, I know that it's gonna be a feast for my wide angle lens. So I take this one self portrait you know, basically just a reflection of me on the outside of the building. And then I just switch to my wide angle. And we walk in the doors and I just fucking go to town. 10 stories is this fucking library. There's fucking escalators inside this library. There's individual rooms and sections. There's whole sections devoted to la large print and foreign languages and braille and special collections and all that kind of shit. And there's computers and terminals everywhere and people are everywhere in this library. Just everywhere are these amazing windows overlooking the city from every angle. And these perfectly isolated people, just like human architecture inside of this massive um, architectural work of amazingness. It's all these blues and grays and these very neutral tones interspersed with these really wild cosmic green colors. People just contributing to you know, just the aesthetic as a whole, especially when I could find people that I could isolate from everyone else and just find them alone. Sort of these lone organic shapes amongst all this geometric. It was really fun just going trigger happy shutterbug in there. It was a load of fun. So the serpent is kind of cool. The way I look at it is it's definitely more of a single coil device, you know? I suppose you could build it dual if you want to, but I like it as a single coiler and it's really, really easy to build. Two negative posts on one side, two positive posts on the other, and it makes it really easy to position those single coils. If you wrap one way or the other, you don't really have to think about it. You just sort of position that coil right smack in the middle wherever you want it to be. And it's got these perfectly placed wicking holes, one on either side. So it's, it's super easy to string this wick right on through my coil, my single fuse Clapton coil, right through here, and then just wick down on either side into these just ginormous wicking holes that have been cut out. It's just super easy to build on, and I love the Phillips head screws here too. I, I like the, the change in the serpent. Like it still has that same sort of wire catch kind of design, 
but what it's done is it's making that wire trap go straight down on top of the wire instead of like from the side where the wire had to be bent before. I really was never a huge fan of the way the original serpent style deck was created. I don't like the way that my leads have to bend and the way that I have to build it a particular way in order for it to fit in there properly. I really like the changes that Matt, I guess, implemented into this device to make it sort of his own and make it a little bit easier to build on. I think it was really successful in that way. I kind of prefer it over the original Serpent, to be honest with you. If I would change anything on it, it's, you know, one of my usual complaints these days is the lack of knurling. There really is not enough knurling on that top piece. It's very, very difficult at times to get it to unscrew and open it up so that I can, you know, fill it with juice. It's really, really frustrating, actually. But I just wish that this was easier to open. Like, I'm struggling to open this right now. You know, it's, it's not fun. But it's a good small chamber, so fills up real fast. And, you know, honestly, it's surprising. Maybe, maybe it's the wick that I'm using. I don't know. Maybe it's that Angora Rabbit wick. But surprisingly, for such a small tank, I don't have to fill it as often as I would think I would. I mean, I fill it like maybe once every hour or hour and a half, something like that. I mean, that was kind of surprising to me because usually small tanks, I can burn through them about 15, 20 minutes sometimes. Um, juice just kind of went a longer way in there, in my experience, you know. I don't know. I was impressed with that. But then again, I was vaping it pretty low. It's a 0.37 ohm build, and I was only vaping it at about somewhere around 50, 60 watts, something like that. Mmm, yeah, that uh, raspberry lemonade, it's heavy on the raspberry. And what I mean by that is that lemonade doesn't outshine it completely, which happens a lot of times when you mix lemonade with other things. The lemonade kind of takes over. Not so much here. The raspberry is still just coming through. It's working really well. It's very well balanced. It definitely has an artificial quality to it, but it's what you'd expect to see in a raspberry lemonade. It might be a little bit on the blue raspberry side and the red raspberry side, if you ask me. There may also be a bit of a cooling element in there, which I think may be unnecessary. That's the icy though. So, I mean, I guess if you're going for the icy, the Italian icy, it makes sense. I just don't know if it needed it. You know, I wonder if it may have worked better without the cooling element. But if you're going for raspberry Italian icy, it works great. Maybe I'm just saying, yeah, I'm complaining about something that's there when I don't want it to be there. You know, I don't want it to be an Italian icy. I just want it to be raspberry lemonade. Which honestly, you know, really isn't fair to the juice, the juice maker. I mean, they're going for a raspberry icy, raspberry lemonade icy, and that's exactly what it is and it works. You know, that cooling element needs to be there for that. So, you know, I take that back. It works. Mm. Yeah, for if you're going for a raspberry Italian ice, yeah, it works. And I, I like it better now that it's blue. Like, it wouldn't work for an Italian ice if it was like a red raspberry kind of thing. You know what I mean? Well done, very well executed. For what it is, absolutely well executed. But I will say it's gonna be more for waffles, who likes the artificial candy kind of things, than it is for me or someone like me. The Suck My Mod Serpent though, has some great flavor, great flavor. Really hitting all those notes beautifully. Last up, we've got Elizabeth, which again, I cheated. It's some sort of a, uh, a cream cheese, um, cinnamon kind of thing. So probably like a cream cheese Danish kind of thing with cinnamon. I think, you know, with cinnamon, I, I, bakery cinnamon in particular, I kind of have to be in the mood. And I have to say right now I am in the mood. <laughs> and I think I will be for a little while. So I think I'm gonna whip out my flask here. Thinking of the original Inakin flask. The Yukan is what it's called actually. The Inakin Yukan. 
And that was, you know, sort of the, the original version of this, if you ask me, was the UCAN. And it was a little half the size of this, half the size of this metal bottle. And you would take screw off the top. It's very well made, metal, stainless steel, and you would push from the bottom. And it had like this little metal needle sticking out. Sort of similar to this, but this has some extra benefits to it. And when I was vaping in, you know, Seattle, I wanted something that was easy and accessible. And I wanted something that I could fill up once and I could carry around all day. And it was easy for me to dispense my e-liquid over to, you know, my atomizer, my cotton. And that's what this does. This is a massive improvement over the original UCAN. This is by a company called Flavorist. And like I said, it was sent over by uh, CACUQ, I forget how you spell it, how you say it, uh, eSig, and they're out in China. And they sent this to me a little while ago and told me to try it out, see if I like it, no need to do a review on it, whatever. But I have to tell you, I've been using this thing a lot and I've been really, really enjoying it. The way that works is you, know, you fill it up and then you have this top section. And this top section has sort of this glass chamber where you can see it filling up with juice. And that part, I don't really get why that needs to be there. You know, it's just the tank. Why is that there at all? It comes with a spare tank too, but I don't really see the point of that. That's the one thing about that I really kind of question. But it's a magnetized lid, which I love. It makes it super easy to pop it off, put it back on whenever I want to use it. Very, very simple. The one thing that I wish about it is that maybe it had you know, a carabiner attachment, like somewhere I could attach it to a keychain or something. That would be kind of cool. That way I can just latch it onto things or attach a carabiner to it. I wish it had that. But otherwise, I really, really like it. And you've got this. It's not doing anything right now because it's right side up. It is, you turn it upside down. And it dispenses the perfect amount of liquid every time. And it's upside down like this. You click it once, and the whole chamber fills with juice. And then, if, you, if I was to click it again, it's going to dispense the liquid. Now, when I dispense the liquid, it's the perfect amount of juice every time for me to um, top off my dripper. And, you know, one squirt, and I'm, I'm vaping again. Um, if I do two squirts, it's gurgling. One squirt is the perfect amount every single time, which I love. I think that's the coolest thing ever. Perfect. This thing is super, super cool, this flask. From our first day when we got there, we were walking around Olympic Sculpture Park to, you know, Chihuly, to, you know, the Pikes Place Market, to, you know, the uh, Kusama exhibit and, you know, all that. Even when we went to go see the Terracotta Warriors, yeah. Got to see the Terracotta Warriors. During the first uh, reign of the first Emperor of China, he basically sets everyone in the country, I don't know, <laughs> a lot of people on this path of creating 8,000, an army of 8,000 Terracotta Warriors for his tomb so he can be enshrined with them. And they discovered them in the 70s. So this is a pretty recent discovery. And they're still excavating this thing. It's something like 22 square miles is, is this site in China. And they've uncovered 2,000 of them so far, roughly. And they're gonna be digging these up for the next uh, God knows how many years. You know? um, they still haven't dug up his tomb yet, the first emperor, but they're working their way to it, I guess. They're, they had an exhibit at the uh, Pacific Science Center Museum, which is the weirdest place. Uh, it's a kids' museum, basically. You know, you got like uh, trebuchets and all kinds of uh, sort of tools that you can use and try to demonstrate science and physics through the ages, I guess. And there's also, you know, a little butterfly petting zoo. We got to walk around in there, and you know, butterflies are flapping around. We snapped a bunch of pictures. It was fun. But it's a weird place for this exhibit. It's the kind of thing like this should be, I don't know, at the Met or Sam at the very least. It doesn't seem like it should be in a kid's museum. 
And when we went in, no kids are, are there. It's just, it's just adults paying to see this one exhibit in the museum that's filled with other stuff. Everything is for kids. It's just an odd thing, odd place for it. But there's a selection of something like 200 artifacts and a number of you know, original uh, terracotta warriors in there. So we got to see, see them. That was really, really cool. We still had some fun in our last day, though. Um, we still got to see the Fremont Troll. You know, there's this troll that the artist built underneath a, a freeway overpass. <laughs> really, really cool. Uh, apparently it was in 10 Things I Hate About You, but I don't remember that part. And that movie was my generation, so I've, I've seen it more than once. And he's holding a Volkswagen Beetle in one hand, and he's got like this jewel on his forehead. It's just the most random thing. Um, it's up in uh, this, uh, this sort of off-kilter kind of burg of Seattle uh, called Fremont and we had fun you know, futzing around there for a while and checking out a vintage market and all kinds of fun stuff. Mmm, yeah. this juice. Elizabeth. Mmm, wow. You gotta be in the mood for something like that. You gotta be in the mood for that kind of cinnamon, that blast of cinnamon in your face. Wow, that's really cool. Hang on, let me redrip. Watch how cool this is. So, when I use this thing, I basically rest it right here on the rim of my drip tip, and then just press it like that. One drop, that's it. I did it twice to get it flowing, because it's, yeah. But you don't usually need to do that, just one, that's it. First you get the cinnamon and the bakery, and then, there it is, cream cheese. The cream cheese is actually tangible here. A lot of times when I get something with cream cheese in there, you don't really get it. You know, it's just kind of, they say there's cream cheese, but I don't believe you, you know. No, I get it here. And I'd say it's kind of a weird flavor. Um, it's a little bit out there. It's more cheesy than creamy. It's not, it doesn't feel like cream cheese, honestly. Uh, I wonder if something like vanilla or something like, I don't know, um, cream maybe. Something else may have worked better here than like a cheese element because it's more like cheese than like sweet, you know, cream cheese kind of frosting. It doesn't feel like frosting, put it that way. It feels more like cream cheese bagel, you know what I'm saying? I mean, the sweet from the cinnamon is great. The bakery is great. Excellent. And then the cream cheese hits, and I feel like something else in there other than cream cheese may have been better. Um, something more like frosting would have been a lot better. It's kind of a disappointment on the last juice. I liked all the other ones a lot better than I like this one. It's a shame because I'm kind of in the mood for the uh, bakery cinnamon right then. So. It is what it is. It's okay. I'll just kind of dump this back into here. Maybe let it steep a while. Maybe it can change a bit over time. I don't know. We'll see. But otherwise, you know, it's a really good, really well executed line of juices. Um, I particularly liked uh, Lucille uh, with, the, with the pineapple. Particularly like the freshness of the strawberries on Marilyn. That was really good. The powdered sugar on Audrey was a really nice surprise for that lemon bar. Um, I did not miss, you know, the bakery in there. I really, really just dug on that powdered sugar. That was awesome. And the raspberry lemonade, Italian ice. If you like something like artificial, sweet, blue raspberry, uh, cooling, um, culotta, menthol kind of thing in there. Yeah. Yeah, that one's for you. Waffles is going to love that one. She's going to be about that all day long. She's going to love that juice. So that was, you know, that's everything. That's everything I wanted to share with you from my trip to Seattle. That's, uh, that's, the, that's the flavorist uh, e-juice bottle. That's the Serpent Suck My Mod Edition. That's the uh, Watofo Vaporous RDA. Well, actually, both of those by Watofo. Um, that's the uh, Anger Rabbit Cotton. And uh, my whole trip to Seattle in a nutshell, um, not really a nutshell, more like a bag of peanuts 
that goes on and on and on forever and you can't quite finish it because this video went on forever. <laughs> um, but thanks for sticking with me. Uh, you guys are awesome. I appreciate all the likes, the comments, the shares, all that good stuff. It's great to be back and I've got tons of videos that I need to film. Uh, a bunch of stuff came in while I was away and I'm excited just to dive back in and get rolling on everything. So expect a lot of videos coming from me very, very soon. Appreciate you guys' patience. And um, yeah, um, you guys are awesome. Two more ways you can support the channel. I have a list of affiliate links in the description on every video. I also have a Patreon account if you feel like making a contribution to the channel. And uh, you guys are awesome. Till I see you again, I'm your homeboy, homeboy Josh. Vape on, vapers. <laughs>